Hello and welcome to part nine of a series where I am building a protogen head. In the last part, I said that I wanted to get a lot of stuff done on my week off from work over the holidays, but unfortunately that didn't quite happen. I ran into some issues working on stuff. I also injured my finger, which set me out of action for a couple of days. And just a couple of other things meant I really didn't get much progress done. I had said that I was hoping to get this done in time for further confusion which is currently in just under a week. But some of the problems that I ran into were not going to be able to be resolved by then anyway. So I decided to slow down and be more thoughtful about how I'm going to go about finishing the rest of the project because I have absolutely no idea really how to do this kind of stuff. The primary problem is I finally got to a point where the head was wearable. Um, that is one, one thing that I spent a good amount of time on on that week was making these little adapter brackets in here to hold the elastic strap on and they just pop out. Yeah, so there we go. So th this is one of the, the brackets that just fits in the circular portion of this inner part of the frame, not the outer uh, cheek here because that's going to get covered but there's it's the circle is replicated on an inner portion here so what i did was i designed a part that would fit in there uh, hold around that piece and have a place to put the elastic strap on and all it needs to do to go in is just go in like into the hole and then line it up It's a little finicky, so I'm unfortunately not going to hold it in front of the camera. Right. Line it up, and it should just snap right back in there. Like so. And I have one of those on either side, and then I also made a little uh, piece here in the middle to hold the slack out. And this will make it adjustable. It's not going to be glued onto the side, that, and that glue could come undone. This is just all nice and friction fit, but in a way that the tension of holding it to the head will hold the brackets in, so there's no concern around that. I'm probably going to sew one end of the strap onto uh, one of the brackets and then let the other end go through and adjust like a backpack strap, but I'm not doing that just yet. But anyway, now that I got it to a point where I could wear it, I was able to you know, do a, a test fit on my head. First thing I noticed was this little back bracket that I have is kind of digging into my cheek, which is uncomfortable. And even putting foam on it wouldn't really help because it just goes in too far. So I decided I would need to rework how the bracket is attached instead of being on the back here to come up from the LED panels along the sides here. And that's what I've done over here with this blue piece. This is actually printed in TPU instead of PLA, so it's flexible and soft, which has downsides because as you can see, it just bends like this. I'm currently running the printer on a second version of this with tiny little extents at the bottom to screw into these outside two uh, screw holes to just give it more, uh, like to hold it down so it won't come up and then hopefully the friction on the support will keep it all in place. So that was the first problem. The second problem that I noticed was when I had the uh, prototype PCB installed on here, like so, even without the matrix portal board on top of it, this is digging into my face too much with the circuit board and getting too close to my eye. And the matrix portal board on there would be even, even worse uh, with clearance problems. So clearly that's not going to work. Uh, I'm still waiting on these PCBs to get here. They were originally scheduled to get here on Tuesday of this week. It is now Thursday. The tracking says that they just arrived in LA, so they probably are going to get here on next Monday, which is what the tracking currently says. That is what I have gotten done with these, uh, these brackets and the head strap. The next order of business that I want to work on right now is magnets to hold the visor onto the head. So the visor goes on the head, but there's nothing holding it on. And I do not want to permanently attach that because getting in and out, like getting everything else in and out 
Well, it's impossible. It's impossible to get the LED panels out if this is permanently attached anyway. But everything else would be a pain in the ass as well. So what I want to do is use magnets. And I wanted to work on this last week, but the thermoplastic sheet that I had was just too thick. Like I could, I could barely even get it cut out. And then it just was like too thick to get to working temperature. So this is a thinner piece of thermoplastic material. Um, similar to Warbla, it's not name, not name brand Warbla. I actually wanted to get some, but the only store in town that has them only had ridiculous quantity as the smallest size. And Amazon will not ship it here for whatever reason. But I did not want to spend $100 on a ginormous sheet when I only needed a small amount. So I got this off-brand stuff and hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then I will figure something else out. And I also have a bunch of rare earth magnets here. I don't know if they're neodymium or whatever, but they're just stuck on my fridge for right now. So the goal for right now is basically cut out some amount of this plastic that I can sandwich a magnet between and hot glue them in place so they hold the the shield the the visor on and i'm probably going to need at least three pairs around the top here maybe maybe more and probably more in other locations i don't i don't think i'm going to do all of them right now but i at least want to get started on that so the first order of business here is marking out how much plastic uh to use for this and i'm not entirely sure how well this is going to melt I have my hot air gun here my heat gun here to, uh, to test it with. But yeah, I'm just gonna cut an amount out and we'll try melting them and smooshing it around because I have no idea how this is gonna work. So let's just do it and see what happens. So it looks like we probably want about that much. That's probably not the right aspect ratio, but whatever. And then on the other side, we probably want about that much, which again, is probably not the right aspect ratio, but I don't know exactly what I'm doing here. So we're just going with it. So now I need to cut this out. Hopefully these scissors will cut. It's very difficult to cut through here, but it is working. Oh, I didn't mention this earlier, but we are in my kitchen right now because that is the only large working surface that I have available. The workbench I have set up doesn't have a very large flat surface to work on, as you've noticed. But the main limiting factor there is I don't have an outlet that I can plug the heat gun into that won't cause a problem with a circuit breaker because this thing uses a lot of power. And that is only a 15 amp circuit over there, but it's got my file server and a, you know other stuff on it. So I don't really want to run this on the same circuit as that computer. So I have to be in the kitchen, which has two 20 amp circuits in it and basically nothing else running at the moment. Okay. So let's get this out of the way. I have no idea exactly how this is going to work. So we're just going to have to try it. And I think I probably want the textured surface out with a hot glue. So let's just try it and find out. And I'm probably going to mute the audio of this portion because this heat gun is not quiet. Well, it's not as loud as I thought it was, but. So I don't know how long I need to be blowing the hot air at this stuff. The other problem is like once this stuff is hot, it's probably going to be difficult to move or handle. So like I don't really know what the correct methodology of doing this is. Okay, it's curling a bit, so maybe that's a good sign. I 
This is very warm and difficult to handle. Oh, that's not doing anything. I may have to do some further investigation on exactly how you're supposed to do that. Okay, so I don't think this is gonna work. I rewatched part of a video that I had previously looked at the, to do this kind of stuff, where I'd gotten the idea of this. And their video was maybe in like two to four X speed, but it was about 10 seconds at most, eight to 10 seconds of that, of them hitting up the heat gun and then just smooshing it together. So that's, you know, 15 real time seconds per piece. Uh, so I tried that on high and maybe a little bit, there was, ab uh, it's absolutely not working. So I think I need to actually bite the bullet, spend a ridiculous amount of money and get the name brand Warbla because I don't want to spend a lot, so much time trying to get this to work, getting this to the point where it is melty enough to do it, but then it's so hot that I can't handle it. Yeah, I guess I'm basically just stuck on this again because I don't really want to spend the time right now. I might as well do a little bit more, like one more try, but I am not, I do not have high hopes. Maybe I was hitting the wrong side. This side is getting like super glossy with the application of heat. Maybe that matters. Oh, it is super, it's actually, okay. That might actually be working. I guess it depends which side you heat it up on or I just wasn't quite hot enough last time somehow. Ah, it came apart. Damn. See, Warbler is supposed to like stick together when you heat it up. And this stuff appears to not want to do that, although it did get a nice imprint of the magnet. All right, that's actually a little bit um, promising. I'm gonna try cutting some slightly larger pieces so there's more surface area for them to adhere to. Because when I rewatched the video, they were using bigger pieces and trimmed it down afterward as needed. So I'm going to try to do that as well. And by no means am I anywhere near done with the software. There are a lot of things I still want to do with the software. Ooh, okay, so that, that is heating up and melting quite quickly. It must depend on which side you blast with the hot air. And I guess using high also helps. Oh wow, that is super, look at that. The problem is the magnet doesn't want to stay in the middle. If I like make an indent, I think I'll probably have to reheat these again. Problem may also have been that the heat gun hadn't gotten the temperature previously. See, this is not going to adhere very well. I don't want to just glue the magnets straight to the stuff because they're tiny and I don't want them to get lost if they fall off. 
but I also need to offset at least one of them so they can actually overlap. But I feel like this is just too not quite what I need. As a person that in the video was just working it with their bare fingers, I did not seem to be having any problems so doing. And this stuff is incredibly warm, even through multiple layers of paper towel. And I bet this isn't going to stay stuck together like that. Whew. And it's still way too hot to handle. Yeah, it doesn't, it seems like it's not going to stay stuck together. I mean, I suppose all I need is for it to get formed around the battery and then I could, if needed, glue those two sides together. But I think I should at least still try to get some actual warbler to like do this better. It's like you can hear the magnet rattling around inside there. Uh, this is still kind of warm, so I don't want to do too much to it yet. Let's go ahead and let it cool. These are just going to be too tiny. I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to make one more because I might be able to make one mount here. Oh yeah, look at that. As it cooled down, it got to a point where it just came apart. Well, that's rather unfortunate. Try just gluing this together and seeing what happens. Anyway, while that is heating up, I suppose I can get started on another one of these. So it is getting there. I suppose polarity of the magnets actually kind of matters here. Shoot, I didn't think of that ahead of time, but oh well. These are probably not going to get used in the long run. So it doesn't matter if it's perfect. How was this together? Was it like, uh, it was like that. This is such a cheap hot glue gun. It also doesn't seem to be feeding the glue stick very well. Oh. I wonder if a different adhesive would work better for this because I do have a bunch of like contact cement. So hopefully this hot glue is sufficient. This one is probably not going to stay stuck together, but maybe it will. So hopefully I, uh, I did not get them on the same polarity fat. So this is actually kind of, uh, this is a little bit thick. Like there, this is not, it's holding, but it's not a nice solid clunk. And I, I guess that's because this plastic is so thick. So that's another reason to get actual warbler because I think it's a bit thinner. Because going through two layers of this is problematic when you, when you look how strong these magnets are directly. That's a nice satisfying snap. And it, it takes effort to, like, even at this distance, they are very strongly attracted. And this guy is, you know, it's supporting the weight of the other one, but mm, okay. It was better than I thought it was going to be. So, oh, and while I still have the hot glue gun, oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, no, the one that was hot glued came apart, but held the magnet in. So clearly hot glue is not the, uh, the solution for holding these together. It might not even be the solution for putting them on the head. So... I think for now, I am going to just pause this project again and attempt to get some name brand Warbler and see if that works any better. Yeah, this hot glue is 
Not very amazing. This one seems to be stuck together. Uh, let's say as I start peeling it apart, I definitely hear, heard it and felt it crack. Yeah. Yeah, it was stuck together until I not even that strongly tried to pull it apart. So, okay. Well, that experiment was a failure. That's just kind of how it is when I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing here. So, other things that I can be working on while I try to get Warbla. Uh, I'm still working on finalizing the exact mounts that I need inside the head frame to hold everything, to hold the LEDs in place. Uh, as I mentioned, I was printing another version of that back mount frame adapter thing in TPU with a little bit more structure, like the extra two screw holes that finished printing when I was talking during this video. So I will probably attempt to install it later tonight to see how that works. I know that at some point I need to rework the artwork on the face because of how much of the panel is stuck back behind here. Uh, so I know the current fate the current mouth like goes back here the eyes a little bit back here So I just got to move the stuff resize the size of the mouth just make it all fit I may eventually try smaller LED panels, but I'm not doing that right now uh, So I can be working on that part of the software I'll probably do that this weekend if I can't figure out anything else to do I need to figure out how I want to adhere the uh, material to use for the skin the outside surface to the head I tried making a little adapter test adapter thing to see about you know, just having something slide on here and then be able to like contour the outside of my head. Uh, this kind of works, doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite line up here at the top. And it also has, runs into issues on the sides here. So this is just very difficult to measure because it's curves and multiple axes. So trying to, I might try to mess with this a little bit more because I just want something that goes back around to here to hold the, the stuff taut. So maybe do that. I don't know. There are things that I can be working on and should be working on and I will be trying to work on moving forward um, now that I've officially given up trying to get this done in less than a week. That's just not going to happen. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time if this is interesting to you. I'm trying to get back to the weekly cadence of updates. So this very well might just be a short non-update of not being able to get much done. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. Uh, thanks for watching.